la ilaha il Allah, wa Muhammad Rasul Ilah. Twelve miles north of the ancient Arabian port of Jeddah on the Red Sea, construction crews from many nations are completing the first phase of the world's largest airport. This 41 square mile showcase of international design, engineering, and building skills. And one of the boldest achievements of these skills is this landmark. In purpose, in design, in scale, there is no other structure in the world that compares with the Hajj Terminal, the gateway to Mecca. Jumbo jets, the caravans of the 80s, will bring hundreds of thousands of devout Muslims from all over the world to the new Jeddah International Airport. From there, the pilgrims will embark on their once-in-a-lifetime obligation, the sacred Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca, and other holy sites of Islam that lie beyond the mountains. And it is there in Mecca, about 40 miles east of Jeddah, that the story of the Hajj terminal begins. 13 and a half centuries earlier. In the year 622 AD, the Prophet Muhammad, founder of Islam, left Mecca for Medina, a pariah scorned for his revolutionary preachings. Eight years later, having won over his enemies in Mecca, Muhammad returned to the city of his birth, leading 10,000 followers on a Hajj to perform the rite of pilgrimage and to worship at the Kaaba the ancient shrine in the center of the great mosque of Mecca. Five times a day, from before dawn until after sunset, the faithful of Islam recite their devout prayers, always facing Mecca. Muhammad also instructed the followers of Islam to make the pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their lifetimes. In today's world of 800 million Muslims, this article of faith has a global impact and has created a massive challenge for the host country, Saudi Arabia, especially in the gateway city, Jeddah. As set forth in the Quran, the Book of Islam, a 30-day period of fasting, the Ramadan, is observed during the fall of the year, and hundreds of thousands of pilgrims called Hajis converge on Jeddah. Hajis arrive by ship, bus, and on foot. Since 1950, when Jeddah opened its modernized airport, thousands arrive for Hajj. Today, more than half a million fly in and out of Jeddah during this period, often as many as 30,000 a day. It was too much for the old airport. In periods of peak traffic, Haji sometimes had to wait several hours retrieving baggage, clearing customs, and getting transportation to Mecca. With a million and a half airborne Hajis estimated by 1985 and two million by the end of the century, the situation could only grow worse. The answer, of course, was a new terminal in a new airport. And for the Hajis, a terminal just for their convenience a simple yet spirit-lifting structure that was made possible by combining a fabric developed for space travel with a design inspired by the traditional shelter of the desert traveler. Tents like these in the Valley of Mina near Mecca. The architects for most of the airport buildings, Skidmore, Owings and Merrill, faced several unique challenges in designing the Hajj Terminal. Gentlemen, of all the facilities that we have on the airport, uh, the one that has the most emotional significance to Saudi Arabia is, of course, the Hajj Terminal. We must marry the traditional Islamic qualities with the technology of uh, 20th century engineering. The first challenge, the to incorporate in design and structure the recognition of Hajis as very special travelers and the host country's obligation to them. This is one of the single most important experiences in, in a Haji's life, uh, a Muslim's life. Dr. Khan, you've made yeah, a pilgrimage I, many times. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's a very valid point because we're talking of trying to create that environment, that uh, total design that 
begins and is consistent with the spirit of Hajj. A single enclosed building was not practical. The key, the key development of the structure was, number one, when we determined that it could not be a building, but it had to be a shaded village. A shaded village in the form of a huge open-sided roof sheltering the congregating areas and air-conditioned buildings that would house terminal personnel. This is a creation of an environment, not, uh, not a building. Right, an environment in which time was translated into space, flexible space that would adjust itself to the crowds as the different days of the arrivals and departures would be dealt with. Next came the challenge of finding the right material to shelter this flexible environment. Metal and concrete were rejected. A fabric roof, on the other hand, was not only feasible, but offered many extra benefits not possible with the other materials. Natural lighting and airflow, for example. We don't have artificial lighting, and it's a tremendous amount of savings, and it's just an appropriate technology for the, for the country. The architects needed a fabric that was strong, durable, lightweight and translucent. Their requirements were met by a product of Owens Corning fiberglass. So as we looked around, we found that the Teflon coated fiberglass was indeed the material that was developed and in fact has already served at least a five year history of a very good use in certain buildings, certain structures. Exploring we designs for the fabric roof, the architects arrived at a form that suggests the classic Arab tent. It being a tent form, of course, what it did is also evoked the spirit of the architectural form that existed there for hundreds of years. The architects then refined their design concept with the engineering requirements. Aided by a computer, it was determined that the optimum shape for the individual roof units would be a double curved conical form tensioned and shaped with cables radiating from the center to the four edges of the cone. Each roof unit would be fabricated individually, shipped to the site, joined together, then suspended by cables from 150 foot steel pylons. Now it remained to evaluate the integrity of the design and the materials and construction techniques. We're here at the University of Western Ontario in the Boundary Layer Wind Tunnel Laboratory. Recently we've been running some studies on the Hajj tent to find out how it behaved in the kinds of winds which one might expect in the desert. A model built to 150th scale is tested in wind forces to 100 miles per hour. Its behavior is observed by scientists and monitored on an oscilloscope. Now came the study of a full-scale prototype. The test site was Owens Corning's technical center in Granville, Ohio, during one of the coldest winters on record. The principal objectives were to test the design and the materials under actual and simulated stress, and to study installation techniques. Test measurements were made by sensors, which fed data into a computer. Months of testing proved that the structure behaved as anticipated and required only minor refinements. The prototype studies would make construction go that much smoother in Jeddah. The fabrication of the roof materials would be a global operation. The steel pylons, diaphragms, and rings produced in Japan the cables would be made in France, and the fiberglass fabric woven, coated, and assembled in the northeastern United States. At this Owens Corning plant on the Blackstone River in Ashton, Rhode Island, the manufacture of fiberglass fabric begins by turning raw glass into yarn. Beta yarn is six times finer than silk. It can withstand temperatures up to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's not affected by cold, moisture, chemicals, or ultraviolet rays.
The superfine fibers are gathered into a single strand. Then four strands are twisted to form the yarn. The yarn is wound onto spools, ready to be shipped to the weaver. For the Hajj terminal, this plant produced one and one half million pounds of beta yarn. The fabric was woven at a mill in New Hampshire. Loaded onto special frames, these yarns form the warp beam or lengthwise dimension of the fabric. Three warp beams are combined into a single 160 inch roll. Other spools of yarn are rewound onto bobbins. These are woven through the warp to create rolls of fabric. The rolls return to the Rhode Island plant where the fabric is coated with Teflon. The coating gives the fabric an extra measure of durability, helping it to withstand the rigors of weather and the relentless desert sun. After curing in ovens, the fabric is visually inspected and tested. A trapezoidal rip test shows the uniform fabric strength. Assured of its quality, it is then shipped to the fabrication plant in Pennsylvania. Computations are made to determine the stretch characteristics of each individual roll of fabric. A final visual inspection and the fabric is cut into panels, then joined into the individual tent-like roof units. Bonding is done with a sealing process combining high temperature and pressure, creating a joint that is three times stronger than the tensile strength of the fabric itself. Once assembled, the tents are folded and packed in shipping crates and on their way to Saudi Arabia. La République de France, cradle of Europe's continental history. And here, northeast of Lyon, in the Beaujolais vineyard country surrounding saint Leger are the classic landmarks of old baronial chateaux and in Bourg-en-Bresse, a 16th century cathedral. Close by are the CCG manufacturing plants that spin the cables for the Hajj terminal roof. The Hajj terminal cables are unique. To guard against the corrosive salt air of Jeddah, the cable must be filled with a plastic known as amorphous polypropylene, which coats the cable's wires as they are twisted into increasingly larger cables. Wound onto reels, the cables are then put through a process that extrudes a jacket of polyurethane over the entire exterior surface, further protection against the harsh elements of the Red Sea air.
the jacket is tested. Then the cable moves to other plants where the sockets and other fittings required in the installation of the roof are attached. Cables are being produced in four different diameters, each designed for a specific application in tensioning and suspending the terminal roof. Fittings and exposed cable receive a final jacketing of polyurethane, and the cables are on their way to Jeddah. civilization both austere and beautiful, and recently becoming diverse with cultural and industrial influence. It is here in the huge shipyard at Tsu that the third principal structural element of the Hajj terminal roof, the 150-foot steel pylons, rings, and connecting diaphragms are fabricated. Skilled steel workers produce the pylons by first rolling the cylinders of steel plate up to one and one quarter inches thick. The pylons are not perfect cylinders, but are actually tapered from eight feet at the base to four feet at the top. The precise dimensions of the pylons are critical to the performance of the Hajj terminal roof. This process is the work of expert craftsmen. surfaces of the pylons, rings, and connecting diaphragms are protected by a special three-coat paint system. Now the years invested in planning, designing, testing, and manufacturing have been transformed into the rich excitement of the present moment, the erection of the first section or module of the terminal roof. The construction of the fabric roof is performed by Owens Corning Saudi Company. First step is the erection of the giant steel pylons. An 80-ton crane, the largest of its kind in the world, lifts the pylons into position.
pylons are lowered onto a concrete footing and the flanged base is seated on giant boats. The alignment is checked for accuracy. The exterior edges of the roof fabric will be attached to double pylons, which are joined by steel diaphragms. The corners of the module are secured to a four pylon frame. The structure consists of five and a half million square feet of fiberglass fabric, 440 support pylons, a total of 29,000 tons of steel, and 246 miles of cable. The tops of each fabric roof unit are attached to steel rings supported by cables. Another set of cables shapes and stabilizes the lower edges of each roof section. These are anchored to the bottom connections on each pylon. Clamping plates are attached to the cables to secure the edges of the fabric. Each fabric roof unit arrives at the site from the United States, ready to be unfolded, then hoisted into place right from its crate. to the lower half of the center ring. Lifted by hoist, then lowered and spread like an umbrella to the edge and ridge cable. shaped by cables radiating from its center to its edges. These radial cables are attached to sockets in the edge cables. Then, the radial cables are laced into fabric sleeves with preformed stainless steel wires. Now the first of the Hajj Terminal's 10 roof modules is ready to be raised. It is an historical occasion and representatives of the architects, engineers, the contractor and the consultants are all on hand to witness it. Last minute preparations are made, communications tested. 
everything is go, and the raising begins. Three, two, one, all start. working simultaneously raise the individual fabric sections to a predetermined height which is just short of docking. Now upon the successful raising of the first 21 units the contractors pause to observe a special ceremonial tradition. Final tensioning is a process taking several days. Using jack screws, alternately tensioning and relaxing the fabric until it is stretched to the correct tolerances. Then the lower and upper rings are bolted together and that section of the roof is in place. Going up. The corners of each fabric section are raised into their final position using hand-operated hydraulic jacks. Once the bottom connectors anchoring the fabric corners to the pylons are in place, they are locked with large metal pins. A neoprene seal is installed over the seams where the edges of the fabric sections are joined to protect the clamping system from corrosion and the fabric from abrasion. The great roof of the Hajj terminal is rising each day with the sun. Each day brings it nearer to completion. Nearer that day when Hajis from every corner of the globe will repose in the shelter of this spectacular oasis and contemplate their sacred journey here in the new gateway to Mecca.